Life and Art. I'm Don Okoro and I'm an artist. Today I'm going to talk about how I made this new headpiece and the reactions I got when I debuted it at a panel that I was on for Hermes. Before we dive in, I just saw the latest cover of Rolling Stone and guess who's rocking a gold chain headpiece? That's right, the amazing Janelle Monet. I made my newest headpiece long before I saw the cover, but I was thrilled to see a similar concept out there once again. It's a reminder of the universal language of art and fashion. I've been wearing headpieces a lot for the last few years, and a big reason is because I like the way they look on me. I purchased one a few years ago, and it was on it was on a website, and it was like in a section for like for like Coachella clothes. And I thought, well, that's something that I would wear normally. So I just went ahead and bought it. And the first time I really wore it out in public was at my punk noir show in Dallas back in 2020. The headpieces seemed like a perfect fit for my style. So I got interested in making my own. I started making headpieces a few years ago for a solo show I had in Austin that was a window display. And it was called Burden of Respectability. And there were four or five headpieces that I had on display and they were made out of copper and various precious stones. The headpieces that I made looked good on display, but they weren't as practical like if I wanted to just wear it out in the world like um, on a daily basis or wear them to a, even to an art show or something like that. They would hang, but just something about it just didn't didn't work quite right. So I needed to like, you know, keep, keep trying and make a few more to, to get it just right. It's a process I'm still figuring out, but I started getting interested in the idea of repurposing jewelry. Then I can make something that's really totally unique, one of a kind, and you know, each piece of jewelry would have had its own life before becoming my headpiece. <laughs> All right now I'm in the process of finishing this headpiece I've been working on. The first step is finding the actual chains I'm gonna work with. And I can find chains at thrift stores and there are also people selling discarded jewelry online. And then I decide how I want the headpiece to look. I link the chains together however I want them. It's a very tedious process. It takes several hours. Now it's time to try it on. I would say that this is my most wearable headpiece so far that I've made. I'm happy with the overall texture and the different sizes of the chains mixed in. The headpieces I wear have become a significant part of my expression and I want these adornments to be more than just an accessory. They can be narratives that are made from reclaimed objects and telling a story of transformation. I'm going to debut this headpiece today at a panel I'm speaking on. Hermes recently reached out to me to invite me to speak on a panel about their theme of the year, Astonishment. And that theme is featured in their magazine, Le Monde Hermes. When I First got this magazine, I was expecting like, you know, more more of a catalog and something really linear, but it was it was actually really fun. It's a, it's a choose your own adventure kind of thing. And they also use augmented reality. So you download this app on your phone and you can hold it up to certain pages and a character will come out and talk to you. Et que précisément pour cette raison, elle est étonnante elle -même. Music, you can get a dance lesson, so it was really a, a fun issue to look at. I'm heading out to Soho House right now. I'm a little nervous because of course it's a public speaking engagement, but I think it'll be okay. The Hermes people like came to town and they set up kiosks where they were handing out free copies of the magazine. Like magazine? Oh, I already have one. <laughs> they were also handing out flowers and they had little activities that you could do. I had never been inside an Hermes store before. I, I looked in a window like in New York, but it's just not something that I had ever sought out. But today they're inviting me into the store to learn more about the artistry of their fashion. They invite artists to create these designs for their scarves each year. Okay, Dawn, so this is a really interesting story. This scarf is called American Quilts, and it's by a French artist. Her name's Aline Honoré, and she's created a lot of designs for Hermes silk. Um, this happens to be silk and cashmere. It's a shawl. But the design was inspired by different quilts in the archive of the Metropolitan Museum. So she went into the archive and then she 
was inspired by all of these different patterns yeah. and then she created an original artwork. Yeah. And then another interesting aspect of silk or cashmere designs at Hermes is that the design is then printed in up to 10 different colorways. So it could be very different. For example, if this is pink, this is yellow, it just completely transforms the design. But this is a really interesting story because it's an American inspired um, artwork. And then obviously you see many, many different examples of different artists' um, designs for Hermes. And each artist receives um, royalties and they receive copies of the final scarf. So it's really an amazing kind of collaboration that Hermes has with different artists around the world. Peter, the head of communications for Hermes, showed me around the store and he told me some of the history and explained how some of the items are made. It started out as an equestrian company and they made items for people who ride horses. And then as horses became less common for transportation, you know, the cars took over. Hermes moved over to luggage and then handbags. And they just kind of, you know, took off from there. And I also learned why the Birkin bag is so rare and expensive. So one artisan makes each Birkin bag and it takes them around seven years just to train to be able to make their first purse. The Hermes event also featured a poet who has this gift to be able to write a personalized poem for you on the spot. So before heading into the panel, I sat down and got one of my own made. Sylvie Alcivar is a San Francisco based poet and she asked me some questions. And after I answered, she got started writing with her vintage typewriter. The poem was actually really touching. I'll read it to you here. It's called Be Astonished. For dawn, by how sometimes fear lives behind your eyes, but you can catch it before it takes over your breath by remembering the hot pink of the sun when she meets dark of night. Oh, what a thing to know you have the power to color your soul into being freed. That really hit home for me. Thank you, Sylvie. You can see I've wrinkled the paper up, but I'm still gonna hold on to this. Now it's time to head back into Soho House for the panel. I'm here in the green room and I'm uh, just waiting and we should be getting started soon. With me on the panel was Sophie Roach, a muralist from Austin, Olivier Wicker, the editor-in-chief of Le Monde Hermes, and Claire Howard, associate curator of the Blanton Museum in Austin, and Claire moderated. We talked about how we find astonishment in our daily lives. And uh, uh, as you saw, maybe there's a kiosk around and it's for me, it's the same kind of a gesture, this conversation and this kiosk. One of the questions was, can we train ourselves to be astonished? And I do believe it's possible to train ourselves to experience a sense of wonder more regularly. And that capacity for astonishment often comes from a place of curiosity and mindfulness. <laughs> talk is over and I'm relieved and um, it, it went well. Um, it was lighthearted and fun and um, I hope that people uh, took some inspiration from that. People really enjoyed the headpiece. Um, they were asking lots of questions about it and I think it's definitely a great conversation starter. A few days later I received a gift from Hermes and I'm gonna open it up here. I'm gonna do a little unboxing for you. box and it smells like the store um, and I, I don't know if it's like a cologne that they sell I, I assume it is but but this is what the store smells like
lovely silk scarf. There are little dots of color, color threads all throughout. Okay, so okay, so it's got the horse, the horse theme. See it? Let me see if it says which artist did it. Hold on, let me look up some more information about it. Okay, so this scarf was designed by artist Elias Kafuros. And um, let's see, the story is it's based on the Chevaloscope scarf design. So yeah, so that's it. Um, I guess this is my first Hermes piece. Um, I definitely want to wear it. Um, I'm not sure exactly, not sure exactly how I'm going to wear it, but I want to find a way to, to wear it in my own style. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you'd like to support, be sure to Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and follow me on social media. See you next time.